allegedly shot by bandits early Monday morning. Here are the details of the separate attacks amid concerns over the continued threat of bandit attacks. Tension is high in Poro area of Savmuru County after two people were killed and four others injured by bandits. The suspected bandits are also reported to have made away with 200 goats and 50 cows. 100 cows have since been recovered by police. The Sunday attack has led to a section of area residents fleeing their homes for safety. Tunashangaa tunawawa na operation wa wanasema iko na sisi wenyewe hatupatiwi namna ya kwenda namna ya nafasi ya kwenda kutembea kuangalia wadui. Tunajua ni bandits kutoka Pokot community na wamepata watu ambaye walikuwa wanajitayarisha kwenda kwa makanisa, wengine wako katika hali zao za kawaida. While condemning the attack, Samburu County legislator Pauline Lingrus has fought the security operators for laxity. She has now called on the national government through the Ministry of Interior to intervene and restore calm in the volatile area. Serikali yao iko na watu na huwa na ulua kila siku kama kama maumbwa. Kila siku sisi mechoka kulia. Wamama wamekuwa wajane. Si tuko na shida sana. Kila siku tu ni maiti tu ndo tunapata hapa. Na tunalamika kama serikali wako hatuna usaidizi hata kidogo. Timothy Kipnosu for Long Time News. The main prison in Kisi is set to be relocated away from the town in a move aimed at providing space to expand the town. This was revealed by the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, Kithure Kindiki, who is on a tour in Kisi. Kindiki says plans are ongoing to source for an alternative piece of land within the region. The relocation will be conducted jointly with the county government. On the war against illicit brew and drugs, Kindiki said they plan to anchor the new directives into law and they will be seeking parliament's concurrence next month to deal with the menace. The decision to relocate this facility from here is irreversible. It is on course and very soon we'll be making a final determination on the new site. We have a national program to enforce the law on uh, the fight against illicit killer brews as well as narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. We have reviewed the progress that has been made by the teams here. Some progress has been made, but we believe there is a lot more that we can do to make sure that we eradicate this problem permanently this time round. In other news, the Private Security Guards Union is raising concerns over what it claims is lack of implementation of the proposed new reforms for security guards, including payment of the minimum wage of 30,000 shillings per month. Speaking in Nairobi, the Union Secretary General Isaac Andabor says security guards are set to meet in Nairobi on March 30th to push for the full implementation of the reforms. Andabor has accused private security firms of ignoring their workers' despite the government's effort to improve their welfare. In slavery, exploitation, kunyanyasa, kuipia watu our time, kuipia watu allowance, environment ya kasi, kuzikwa kama kakasi ya ngombe, in Asia, there is a salasi? Salasin. And in the political arena, elected leaders at the coast allied to the Orange Democratic Movement have endorsed a former Mombasa governor, Hassan Joho, for the presidential bid and the position of ODM party. The leaders said it was time because region had one of their own in their race to become the sixth president of Kenya. Orange Democratic Deputy Party leader Hassan Joho, meanwhile, has called for unity among leaders from the coast, urging all leaders to support his bid. Senator Ledama Olekina and Governor Ahmed Abdullahi also endorsed the former Mombasa governor. Hata wengine ambao kwamba wako katika vyama vingine, mimi nina imani, nina imani. They will see which is the winning side. Wataona hapa ndio ambao kwamba kwenye 
kufa. Na nitaambia hawa ambao mmeuliza mimi niko wapi wakati Raila Odinga akaenda kiapishwa pale ile ndio saku ile kiko ni kweli kulikuwa wapi? Ndio risasi na uruke. Na mimi mwenyewe ndo kamkaribisha karibu baba ujawapishwa mimi hasa ndio. Then you have the audacity today to ask me nilikuwa wapi? There's no one who has got the monopoly of saying I'm the one who is going to take this. All of us must stand strong and make sure that we bring our energies to synergize so that we see that the things that you've been fighting for you have a chance to be able to achieve them na tukishikana pamoja hakuna kitu ambacho kitatuzuia A section of secondary school principals from Ndere County has disputed Kenya Secondary School Heads Association elections that were held last week. The principals expressed concerns over the election process for the Kesha Mandera chapter, which they claim was not free and fair. They claim the results of the elections do not represent the face of the county. They say the process lacked original equity inclusivity and ethnic balance they now want the whole process regarded as null and void and a fresh election to be held there was no election held the officials declared and broadcasted yesterday does not represent the face of the county and doesn't meet kesha constitution and the constitution of kenya 2010 we therefore notify the educational stakeholders to, ne to, to take note of this development and work with our team to realize the good working relation to achieve our collective goals and aspirations. The government, through the National Government Constituency Development Fund, will set up Huduma Kenya services in all 290 constituencies across the country. Public Service Principal Secretary Amos Gadesh said the aim was to enhance the accessibility of government services in line with the government's digitization agenda. <laughs> Monday morning, the Principal Secretary for Public Service, Amos Gatisha, met senior representatives of government ministries, departments and agencies to discuss the status of deployed services on the Huduma Kenya platforms. And, uh, the model that we are developing now for the Huduma centers will be a building with the one story. Ground floor will be for Huduma and then first floor will be for uh, Jitume centers where the, uh, the, the members of the public can access. The PS said the new Huduma digital centers will be established in collaborative effort between the members of the National Assembly through the National Government Constituency Development Fund, NGCDF. Uh, we have several MPs now who are preparing uh, either to renovate buildings that are in their constituencies, but some of them are also constructing uh, the buildings, and we are encouraging many more to do that. We Katisha said Huduma Kenya will provide ICT infrastructure and manage the day-to-day -day operations of the new Huduma Digital Centers in 290 constituencies across the country. Yeah, because there is the need. The need is there. Yeah? We have seen uh, the customer satisfaction has, has dropped. Our target is normally to have a satisfaction of 92%. It has now dropped to 79% and it is now becoming a major concern. He said the main aim is to enhance the inclusivity and accessibility of government services in line with the government digitization agenda. Now moving on, Kilifi County government has commenced demolitions of unapproved buildings, especially in contested uh, settlement schemes within the county. The governor, Gideon Mungaro, has also warned the office of the director of criminal investigation at the Mtoapa police station to stop meddling in land matters, claiming that many residents were being harassed by land grabbers and tycoons through the DCI office. Governor Mungaro emphasized that all developments lacking proper approvals will face demolition. He also condemned the alleged harassment of residents by land grabbers using the DCI office, asserting that such actions will not be tolerated. History of threats that you to our DCI's Yunanani. I don't want to hear them. We have county laws, yeah? we have our bylaws. If you build without, uh, without permit, we will break the wall. If you bring a story building, we will break it. This is after some residents of Mwendo Wapanya area in Mtwapa were issued summoning letters to appear before the Mtwapa police station DCI office for interrogation over land. 
Boros mentoka sijui kuhusu criminal investigations vijana wameharibika wanakata katoto mapanga nini lakini kufika kule mambo anageuza ni kwamba ni mambo ya mashamba mtu anasaini karatasi ambayo haijui marehemu hao wampatoa mabarua kwamba wa, waende kwa DCI leo ninaenda kuwakilisha kule DCI Residents said that the constant harassment had rendered them absolutely poor since they feared investing on their land Daniel Tokali, a resident of Mtwapa, said that the Mtwapa police station officers were notorious for enforcing orders that are not within their mandates, and that residents were being selected randomly and summoned to the station to receive warnings. Tunaona ya kwamba watu wanashikwa. Kila siku watu wanashikwa. Hata kuna wengine sasa hivi wanatafutwa bado wapatikane wapelekwe polisi. John Junge for Lunchtime News. Nyandarua Boarding Primary School alumni have spearheaded a campaign for the construction of a multi-purpose digital library at an estimated cost of 70 million Kenya shillings. The digital library is expected to serve over a thousand pupils currently enrolled at the school and the broader Nyahururu community. The school's head teacher Charles Mbogwa reflected on the journey that led to the transformative initiative and uploaded growth of the alumni community over the past 13 years. They have given the school digital gadgets that are really assisting in integration of ICT in our school. And we want to ensure that uh, the children uh, who attend this school that are able to, to keep up with the skills of the 21st century. And uh, this is going to be through the value that technology brings uh, to, uh, to education. We are excited to come and give them a resource that is going to benefit not only us, not the current uh, students and also the future students. Uh, I don't know. I am from Education Matters. Members of Rombo Group Ranch in Kajado South want the government to urgently intervene in what they claim as increasing cases of land grabbing in the ranch. The members who held special prayers at the ranch on Sunday have accused a cross section of politicians who they claim have grabbed a huge chunk of land in collusion with some of the ranch management committee members. They have lamented that the land grabbers have deprived them of pasture, including water, which may lead to the death of their livestock. Kupata alima wa kulima wote ambao ni wakulima ambao wametoka sehemu mbalimbali wa Kenya. Wengi wamehama, wengi wameshindwa, hata sisi tumeshindwa. Sielewi wanataka tufanye nini? Sisi wa Masai si watu wa kufuga. Tuko na ngombe wengi buzi kondoa kila kitu. Wakati walikata ardhi, hawakuwa hata cha sehemu hata ya ngombe kula. Hawakuwa hata sehemu ya kuweka shule, masiptalini. Tunashuku ya kwamba imenyakuliwa kwa sababu e, mbeleni wametuambia ni eka 2025. Sasa hii kulingana vile tunafuatilia, tumeona imepunguzwa imesha imeshapotea eka 2006. Nakulukwani, nusu wa gno yolo solanga. Nusu wa nengera hangu. In a bid to curb banditry along the Malaso Valley, pastoralists have been urged to transition to farming. The valley has been plagued with insecurity, leading to significant loss of livestock for many families. Consequently, local leaders are advocating for a shift towards agriculture to ensure food security and livelihood sustainability. During the launch of May seeds distribution, the Laborkaran area where banditry has uh, taken its toll. Samburu Governor uh, Jonathan Lelelit emphasized the importance of embracing farming practices. Additionally, the current government has pledged support by offering to plow one acre of land for each farmer. Because of the 
these members of cattle rustling, actually to go back to their farms, do plowing, and actually try to make sure that during these long rain seasons, we do planting so that actually by the end of it, actually we are food secure. A section of residents of Moa sub-locality in Lamo County have raised concerns over what they deem as an unjust process in the appointment of the area chief. The residents claim the procedure for appointment lacked transparency and fairness. They argue the selection process seemed to favor certain individuals and lacked the necessary inclusivity to represent the interests of the entire community. They are now demanding for the position to be re-advertised. kotini tukiongozwa na wakili wetu tutakwenda kotini kuzuia ili huyu kijana amba amepatiwa hiyo 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 barua ama amepatiwa hiyo nafasi tuhakikishe kuwa hatoweza tuweke injection na kutoweza kuendelea na katika hii kazi moving on it's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life story will develop. This quote serves as a reminder for the, those among us who are driven by the entrepreneurial spirit, which leads to the creation of businesses and inventions that greatly impact individuals and society at large. Our reporter Ralph Wangutusi explores more of these in the following report. According to a 2024 InfoTrack survey, tough economic times have forced up to 45% of Kenyans into starting side hustles. Out of those 45%, 47% are men, followed closely by women at 42%. Today, we highlight the story of two entrepreneurs with contrasting backgrounds to understand the motivation behind starting side hustles. Is it the education system? Is it limited employment opportunities? Or is it simply a matter of interest and necessity? In the streets of downtown Nairobi, we meet with Newton Lumumba, who is a graphic designer. Previously having been employed in the printing business, he decided to venture out into running his own shop. Well, we employed, when graphic designer we employed, kuna wasi wako mahali pia wanataka ku employed na kuna chances nikasema jumi ni hivi na niko hivi what if mimi mwenyewe nijitengenezee employment yangu na ni employ pia maboys wengine various work limitations associated with being employed drove him to take a leap of faith into self employment lazima upe client attention mm -hmm. so what if sasa niko employed sina hiyo time sasa maybe ni sema naweza waleta but huko unajua pia wako na clients wao wenye wanataka mimi niwahudumie mm -hmm. Lumumba opted out preferring freelancing opportunities referrals zinaenda zika grow nikapata niko na client wengi wengi mm -hmm. wenye siwezi wa maintain nikiwa venye niko employed mm -hmm. so that's why nika take turn nikasema mimi naweza acha nijaribu nianze mimi mwenye so in this gig economy, graduates not only need to be book smart, but also street smart. With limited employment opportunities, side hustles are now the new source of hope and income. Deeper in the streets of Nairobi CBD, we meet with Stefano Wairagu, a recent graduate, who despite getting a good education, chose to pursue business instead of employment. I'm not for employment, basically because I've seen the fruits of business, being an entrepreneur. And now the way Kenya is, the way things are more evolving each and every day, entrepreneurship is, is one thing that will lead you, lead you to places. Deciding what and where to sell or which business to start often holds back many when getting started. For Wairagu, tapping into the right market was only a matter of intuition. I love fashion, I love um, dressing well, I love looking good, so I give people what I do myself. Motivation being hard to come by, Wairagu says one should keep moving when the going gets tough. 
a lot of times I felt like giving up in this business journey. A lot of times ni meskiatuni kai home I I I I just don't come to work. A lot of times ni meskiatu I see I can't do it. But push yourself, pray, push yourself, jitume, that's all. Despite the tough economic times, Kenyans in this hustle economy are finding different ways to make their ends meet. Whether educated or not, wealthy or simply starting out, there still remains opportunities to be explored. Have you thought of your side hustle yet? Reported for KBC Channel One, my name is Ralph Wangutu. Well, that report brings us to our first break here on Lunchtime News. Don't go too far, we still have more news coming up. Safe for an intriguing showcase of African talent as Kenya, Zimbabwe, Malawi, and Zambia participate in a four nation tournament set to be played between March 21st to 26th in Lilongwe, Malawi. Catch the action live on KBC Channel One as the four nations square it out ahead of the June 2026 World Cup qualifiers. All four nations will also field under 20 teams in the tournament. Live on KBC Channel One, your true sports partner. We are absolutely ready. Um, we are on track at the preparations for the rally. We have no doubt that we're going to have an amazing event. And right now we, we're doing our traditional reke just to make sure that uh, every stage, every stage of the event is in the right condition. We are at the super special stage at Kasarani, a very, very important stage, the first competitive stage. We are going to run across each of these stages today. Uh, I can confirm that we, we should be ready. We have also done some work on our legacy greening project here, a planting trees, because the idea really is that ultimately we want to turn this uh, whole super special stage into a botanical garden, um, uh, advancing our greening agenda. And our greening agenda is part of our legacy, our legacy project. So, Twende Vasha, KBC. Every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. on KBC Channel One. You are the Tian Ti Wuli Scientist. In your opinion, will the technology really change the world? 核武器已经很可怕了，但宇宙中还有更可怕的力量。论野，确实不是一件容易的事情。没有老雷，红岸基地早就完了。有时候觉得生命很珍贵，一切重如泰山。
Welcome back. This is Lunchtime News. Now, Defence Forces Old Comrades Association is one of the avenues through which a former military men and women come together to address the uh, after retirement welfare warrant officer to retired uh, Maurice Odour, who served in the Kenya Army for 33 years, is a member and official of the Defence Forces Old Comrades Association, and he is our focus on military tales. Let's have a look. We are in the military town of Gilgil, and rightfully so because here we have two army barracks. We have the 5KR and we also have the Kenyatta barracks. We have the anti-stock unit right here in Gilgil, and we also have the National Youth Service uh, Camp, which is right here. And we are here to meet a number of military veterans to give us their story while they were in service. It is a sunny morning in Gilgil, Nakuru County, where we make a stopover at the Defense Forces Old Comrades Association, Defoka offices, to meet one military veteran, Maurice Otieno Odor, in his office, where he serves as an official of the Defense Forces Old Comrades Association. <laughs> Odor later welcomes us to his home a few kilometers from his office. Kwa jeshi tulikuwa tunaanza na service number. Oh. Mimi nilikuwa my service number ilikuwa 14404. Eh warrant of Satu Otieno. Maurice Otieno Odor. Nilisaliwa mali naitwa Auria. Ukwala. Sia ya county. Wakati nilifanya CP, nika wambia wazazi kwamba munitafutia kosu. Eh, sita wazana na masumu. For the love of the uniform service, Maurice Otieno Odor tried out a record 12 times between 1979 he got the position in 1980. Kazi ya jeshi, nilianza kutafuta 1978, six times. Na tulikuwa tunaandikanga wati ya sports, wati ya band, na wati ya trades, na hizo zote nilijaribu. Iyo 78. Marasita. Marasita. Bila kufaulu. Bila kufaulu. Walikuwa nasema mimi, ba, ni mtoto. <laughs> yeah. 79 ni kajaribu maratano, pia si kufaulu. 8 nilienda maramoja, ni kafaulu. Useful for him in joining the Kenya Defense Force when he joined as a tradesman. His body stature almost denied him a chance even after excelling in the rest of recruitment considerations. I was <laughs> a panel beating and spray painting. I was a panel beating and spray painting. I was a panel the Ten best. Nika kwa number nine. So mkubwa kasema, uyu uya tatu atuenda kutuwa bisha huko tukienda. Mm. Alafu mingina kasema pana, afande, saidia hei tu atuenda kukula huko na kukua. Kukua mkubwa. <laughs> mkubwa. E, walikuwa nataka watia trades. Tukapatika na watu tatu. At the military academy, he started storekeeping among other courses. Nika postiwa 66 artillery, mm. uh, 1980. Mm. Uh, Nilingia artillery, 1980, mwezo wa 2008. Mm. Nika round of zatu. Nika peleko embakazi. Mm. Embakazi, nika kaa 2011. Nika rudiswa tena 66. 
Hapo ndiyo nilikuja nikaretire. Kwa jeshi nimekosomea stock keeping. Nimesomea stock keeping plus 1 nikasoma administration admin management he also outlined some of the many challenges that soldiers face during military operations namboa ilinyeza paka na gari ikaribika tukakaa kichakani bila chakula nilikuwa na nyama hakuna chakula ingine na ile kitu tulikuwa tunaendanga kuchukua ni fresh so uko na fresh hakuna namna unaweza kuzipika paka nyama ikaribika tukatupa Asgari na ngojea. Two of Otiano's children have followed in his footsteps as well. Mungu alinisaidia. Niko na wanawake wawili. More than 11 children. Na kwa hao 11 kuna mmoja ameamua nifuate baba. Wali walitamani. Walitamani sana. So niko na mmoja kwa kwa jeshi, niko na mmoja kwa prison. He has a message for young soldiers. No kikozi imenifunza vitu mingi zaidi. Kwa sababu inanifunza resistant. Yaani kukokamafu. Na imenifunza discipline. Na imenifunza how to stay with the people. As a security supervisor for the Defense Forces Old Comrades Association, the FOCA, he outlines his roles. Kwanza mimi ni supervisor ya nakuru Gilgil na Kuru region ya security na simamia watu wetu ambao wanachunga mwangaza ya Longonot, Defco, Kinyata Barracks, 5K, KME ya pili tuko na welfare ya retirees and to unwind Otieno is deeply into church activities which he says gives him fortitude. Hobbies yangu ni kanisa. Napenda kanisa. Kanisa imenitoa mbali. Imenipatia comfort. Now in his late 60s, Otieno is reminded of his time in service by the many trophies he won individually and jointly. So wakati tulikuwa kwa range, ndio nikakuwa na mato. He allows the Kenya military for maintaining high levels of discipline, workmanship and professionalism. And his parting shot. Tusipokuwa na umoja, there is no any progress. Tutakuwa ni tutaendelea. Na umoja hiyo ndiyo itafanya tuendelee mbele. Bwana Maurice, tunashukuru sana kwa kwa muda wako. Thank you. Na pia kwa maisha yako na pia kwa kumbukumbu zako. Asante sana. Asante sana. Mbarikeni sana. Asante. In a time karibuni. Asante. For military tales, I'm Ben Troy Njua. Well, thank you so much, Ben Troy, for that report. Kuwait is living in the boundary of Laikipia and its yellow counties are now coexisting peacefully following the construction of the 20 million shillings Tura water project in the region. Water scarcity in the area, especially during the drought period, has been attributed to clashes. The water project follows a task force that was convened in 2021 to address the escalating tensions due to water scarcity in the two neighboring counties. The task force was composed of elders from affected communities and national and local government. Lisuka uwaza mabaina yetu sisi watu wa Laikipia kwande ya Tiamamut na watu wa Oldonyiro kwande ya Kipsing juu ya Malisho. Tunashukuru mungu kupitia haya maji tumeasa sasa kuwa ni mandugu. Umradi umradi ambao umeletwa kwa njia ya amani kuweza ku kuweza kupatanisha jamii za Laikipia na ICOL
Now let's take a look at news making headlines in the business world. Kenya is putting 200,000 acres under sunflower production in efforts to reduce by half importation of edible oils by next year. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi says the initiative also involves putting increasing land under palm oil from the current 50,000 acres to 1 million acres by year 2027. In a bid to reduce import of edible oils, the government intends to facilitate the establishment of cottage industries across each county dedicated to the processing of cooking oil. Under the first phase of the program, the government will release 500 tons of sunflower seeds to farmers to put an initial 200,000 acres of land under sunflower. We are distributing uh, over 500 metric tons of sunflower in the country through our, our, our county systems to really get this seed to our farmer. In addition, one million acres of land will be put under palm oil by the year 2027, and already 50,000 acres have been identified in the counties of Homer Bay and Siaya. We have uh, regions around Lake Victoria, the counties along Lake Victoria, and counties in coast. Those Cumulatively, we have closed one million acres that are suitable for uh, uh, oil palm uh, planting. Uh, currently, we've engaged uh, two counties, uh, Homer Bay, they've set aside 25,000 acres, so we are in the process of uh, 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 producing seedlings for them. Another 120,000 acres will be put under canola. Next year, we'll have reduced by 50%. But long term, we'll want to stop importing and be a net exporter. That, that's the agenda, but that will be by 2027. The target is to produce 40 million liters of cooking oil annually. The sunflower is uh, planted. Before we get the harvesting, we have 300 pressers that will be able to give to the farmers through women in groups, through cooperatives, for them to be able now to get the oil out of the, uh, the seed. Currently, Kenya's annual consumption of edible oil is estimated at 900,000 tons against a domestic production of 80,000 tons. Benson Ryoba reporting for Lunchtime News. Farmers in Baringa County have been tipped on how to leverage the Coffee Cherry Advance a revolving fund to boost their farming. Speaking in Eldama Ravine, Cooperative's Cabinet Secretary Simon Chalagui said only 4.5 million shillings had been utilized by farmers, urging them to embrace the fund to improve co coffee production. Your society, we want to grow coffee production in Baringo. From the current production, I think they are doing 5,000 to 50,000 to, 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 to 10,000 metric tons within one year. I want to challenge you. I want to ask you to support us to push the coffee production. This is a cash crop. It will increase the money in the pockets of these people of, this, of Baringo County. It will diversify their incomes. Moving on, agriculture experts are calling on the government to enhance sustainable and regenerative farming practices to deal with effects of climate change. The Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa, Kenya, just like many developing countries, are facing a huge food crisis due to changing weather patterns and outmoded farming practices. Sustainable and regenerative farming is gaining prominence as a viable solution to deal with the ever-present challenge of climate change on agricultural systems. By promoting biodiversity, soil health and resilience to extreme weather events, agricultural experts say agroecology offers a holistic approach to sustainable food production. GDP to increase productivity by 6%. That couldn't happen because governments have no money. And because of the reason I know that, uh, I mean, we have not brought climate change. Climate change is a result of the lifestyle of the North. But we are suffering because of that. And they should give us enough amount of money to help us adapt 
to the climate, uh, uh, the climate crisis. According to the World Bank, more than 30 billion US dollars was lost in Africa in 2020 due to declines in crop and livestock production caused by extreme weather events. Our best foot forward in ensuring that we come up with robust policies, robust plans, and robust strategies. But these strategies can only be realized if there's significant amount of resources, there's significant amount of technology, there's significant amount of human resources. The Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa Chair Dr. Milan Bali says Kenya with its diverse agroecological zones is well positioned to lead the way in embracing agroecological practices. However, the transition requires substantial investments in research, capacity building and knowledge dissemination. AFSA says farmers need to be provided the necessary training, resources and information to transition from conventional farming methods to sustainable agroecological practices. Frederick Moki for Lunchtime News. And now in the sports arena, Gorosare High School and Ringa Boys High School were crowned champions in basketball and hockey, rep rep respectively, rather, after conclusion of the just concluded Nyanza Region Secondary Tamwan Games. Both teams will represent their region at the national level. Agoro Saro High School's basketball team defeated Maseno School 51-44 in a tightly contested final to clinch the basketball title. So we empower our youth and the kind of win that we get in the field, we also bring it to class so that we perform both in class and in out of class activities. Ringa Boys defeated Kisumu Day 1-0 through a penalty, making history in the boys hockey category and writing a new chapter in their sporting journey. With their triumphs, both teams have earned the honor of representing the region at the national level. Switch genders. More than 100 elite British sportswomen say they would be uncomfortable with transgender women competing in women's sports. Some argued that some athletes competing in female categories puts the women at a disadvantage, while others say that sports should be more inclusive. Genders and participating in women's sports often resulting in them dominating the competition. American swimmer Leah Thomas is one example who became the first ever openly transgender athlete to win the NCAA Division I National Championship. A number of sports have since banned trans women from competing in female categories, but some athletes still feel that they run the risk of losing their careers if they speak out. <laughs> Some athletes feel uncomfortable competing against transgender competitors. It is, however, widely agreed that there should be a place for trans athletes to compete, just in a separate category. The athletes suggested that more research should be done to make this possible so that the fairness, sporting integrity and safety of women's sports is maintained. For Lunchtime News, I'm Emmanuel Ndungu. Like EPS Barcelona ladies and Lisa FC were crowned the champions of the Central Region Safaricom Chapa Dimba Soccer Tournament after winning their respective finals at the Wanguru Stadium. The two teams will now represent the region in the National Chapa Dimba Finals, set to be held next month in Kisumu. Two-team winners and defending champions Barcelona ladies successfully defended their title for the third time in a row after beating their opponent St. Joseph from Oranga 5-0 in the final match. Goals from Carlton Asambu, Lois Matendechura and Milka Wamboi gave them the lead in the first half before Asambu and Naomi Masini netted two goals to earn them a spot in the national finals. I I'm proud of my team, even my coach. Coach wana nipea moral. Nikienda kutrain, wana nitrainisha penye niko week. Na penye niko week, kuna rectified, wana enda mbele. 
In the boys category, Lisa FC from Laikipia County beat Mpesa Foundation Academy from Kiambu 3-2 in the final match. John Localia's braces and Peter Kamau's goal propelled Lisa to victory in a match that saw Mpesa Academy open the score sheet with Wycliffe Odira's goal. Barcelona ladies and Lisa FC pocketed 250,000 shillings each and tickets to represent the central region in the Safaricom Chapadimba National Finals slated for next month in Kisumu County. Nora Mwangi for Lunchtime News. Well, that brings us to the end of our bulletin this afternoon. Thank you so much for choosing Lunchtime News. For more news, check out our website at kbc.co.ke. Our sign language interpreter is Len Saldingo. My name is Jack Uambiru. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. This is about atrocities that are happening by the church committed by a few a people called prophets. But they're not prophets, they're false prophets. Because they keep taking advantage of people, uh, they abuse women, they take money from people. They're smart, they're intelligent, they're very good salespeople. They can sell anything to you. You just need to package yourself very well, put on a tie and a suit and have a way that you, you speak with authority, get a place, be on social media, flaunt some some cars and all that, speak the right, deceitful language. But the problem is big. And the problem is not limited to South Africa. Ashums, who receives calls for help from across the continent, recently received a message from a young woman in Lagos who had lost thousands of euros to a prophetess named Yemesi Imasi. Thanks to Ashum's encouragement, the young woman went to the police and opened a case against Imasi who is now wanted by the authorities. Today, Ashoms is following up on the case. As for the woman, the information that reached me about three days ago is that she has been arrested. She has been in the EFC custody. I see. So she's been arrested. What are the police saying now? Because she has a court case and hopefully some sort right. of justice is going to come. Yes. So I barely disclosed where I stay and all that. Even though Imasi right. is now in police custody, mm. her victims may still be at risk. False prophets like her often operate as a part of a criminal okay. syndicate with henchmen whose job is to intimidate and spread fear. Ashums knows that from a personal experience. Some of his people came to my house in the night three times and threatened my wife, who has nothing to do with it. We're coming to kill you and the children. And the sad part of it is, no one is doing much about it. We have said we can't play nice when people's lives are at stake. Time to play nice is over. It's time for us all to start this revolution.